So hello again YouTube, it's Mr Analytical here and today I've got a video which we're going to start exploring the GPS on the new Samsung Gear smartwatch which is the Samsung Gear Sport it's called and what I want to do is download some apps that I used on the Gear S3 on and put them on the Gear Sport and just see how they compare and how they perform. So the first app that we're going to download is called Speedometer for Gear you need to make sure obviously that you're connected via Bluetooth to your, your Gear Sport. And if you browse the Gear Store for Sam Speedometer for Gear, it's by Samsung. And just hit install on there. And it'll just come up loading. And you just hit accept and download. And you'll see it said there it needs access to location. And on the previous Gear S3, what we find was that if the phone was on, that the speedometer would use the GPS from the phone by default but if you turn the phone off or at least put it in flight mode then it would use its own standalone uh, GPS so we'll just test that and see how we get on another app that we'd need to install or we're going to install to do a test here if I can go back on my phone so another app that we're going to use is called Quick GPS so here it is Quick GPS position and that, that one is by 7 Rutten. So I'll just download that one as well. And what this one does is it gives you basically a simple uh, longitude and latitude position of your watch. So what we'll do as well is we will connect, uh, we'll turn on GPS on both watches and we'll try and compare where what the longitude and latitude position is because it'll be interesting to see if they both give the same reading. And obviously they should. Um, what we had found on the Gear S3 was sometimes the longitude and latitude position wouldn't be correct. We just want to see if there's a difference here uh, and see which one is more accurate. So there we go, we've got Samsung Gear S3 and we've got quick GPS position and we've got speedometer and we've got the Samsung Gear Sport and we've got quick GPS position, GPS position sorry, and we've got speedometer. So that's us ready to go and do our outdoor testing. So let's have a look at that. So here we are outside folks and the first thing we want to, to do is make sure that our phone isn't connected to the watches and we'll just turn off all our data connections there or you can put your phone in flight mode. So that, that means that we're not connected to either of the gears. So I'm just going to turn them both on. Power on. Power on. So you can see Gear Sport and Gear Frontier. And the first thing we're going to do is connect, uh, make sure that location is turned on. So again, you can compare the size. I have a six centimeter wrist across from side to side here. So that's about six centimeters. And you can see that the Sport certainly is smaller on the wrist than the S3. So I'm going to go straight into settings and you can get into settings on the Sport by swiping down and hitting the little gear icon. And then we go in to connections and just make sure that your location is on. Just press on it and then go to GPS only for this test. And again on the, the gear S3, we we can go into settings the using the bezel here. So we just page over to the second page, there it is. And again, go down to connections. And make sure again that your location is on, yeah. And we press on it and check that it's on GPS mode, which it is. So now we're both ready to go. We can press the back button to get back to our menus. And then rotate the bezel to find the, the apps that we want to use. So the app we want to use is quick GPS position. So there we go, quick GPS position on both. Quick GPS, quick GPS, acquiring position. And let's see now uh, how we get on. So the Sport one just ever so slightly quicker, 54.85 on the S3 and 54.85 latitude on the Sport. So they're both fairly close uh, according to this, that this one, this S3 would have more accuracy at plus and minus four meters versus the plus and minus six meters on the gear sport. So if you want to check where your latitude and longitude position 
it was coming up as, make sure you enter your latitude position first. So the latitude position we had was 54.851121 and then put comma and then your longitude position and make sure you remember and put in the minus sign so 5.808556 so make sure as I say you have that minus and then hit search and there you go it brings you to the park that I was at so that says current court Carwin park there's the current park and there's where I was and there's where I am doing this testing so that's worked out really spot on it's if I just zoom right in there and change to satellite you see there's the park so that pin is from there's your latitude and longitude position up at the top on the left and there's the pin where I was standing and that's pretty much bang on accurate that's the park that I've walked around and there's the kids play park that's 100 percent right so that's a good job samsung so there you go so quick gps so far so good and the key points on that are make sure that number one that you have location on on both devices number two make sure you have gps only enabled number three which is really important make sure you don't have your phone connected to the watch because that will interfere with its connections so the second thing we're going to test is the speedometer let's go for that speedometer and we know we can get gps location because we've just done it on the quick gps speedometer i agree so now you can see both of them say track your speed so we can just hit start here and somehow i'm going to try and video this at the same time let's see how we go so i'm going to press start start and start searching for gps it says so we should, we'll just let it get gps and now we're sitting at zero miles per hour so i'm just going to clip out of the tripod here let's see what we can do and sorry if the focus isn't great here and sorry if it's shaking a bit we seem to be a bit faster on the gear sport i'm going to try and speed up a bit so again the gear sport's reading lower than the the uh, s3 and you can see my screens are continually timing out i should have maybe changed that three miles per hour a healthy walking pace and I'll try running for you but whether I'm focused or not remains to be seen and then back to walking at three miles per hour and if I change direction speed up I'll try and walk now at four mile an hour for a challenge I just don't seem to be able to reach four mile an hour there I'm just about So there we go guys that's back to the tripod so sorry for that pathetic effort at walking but we'll just hit stop now stop and stop stop tracking a tick stop tracking a tick so now what you see is we have our top speed and so on so we'll just have a look at the the s3 first of all uh, my arm's going to fall off at this point so top speed 4 miles per hour, average speed 3 miles per hour, distance 0.1 miles, total time 2.27. So let's compare that to on the, the Gear Sport. And there we go, top speed 4 miles per hour, average speed 3, distance 0.1, time 2.24. So you can see that they're both uh, in the same ballpark, so they both agree there's quite a difference in the graph here but i'm not just sure what that's down to 
They're both in miles per hour. Both top speed of four. Both average speed of three. Both a distance of 0.1 miles. So you can see the GPS is useful for the speedometer. So the last test I suppose we should really do is a walking test. But I think this video has been long enough so far. We're sitting at about nearly 10 minutes. So I'm going to break off now and make GPS part two, which we'll, we'll do the walking test in. So guys, thanks for watching. That was the speedometer and quick GPS location apps tested and we've proved there that the GPS works pretty much similar on both of these watches. So again thanks for watching, any questions comment below and of course like and subscribe and I'll see you in part 2.